I'm facing all my giants They try to scare me into thinking I can't fight it They tell me I should never even think of trying But that's just me, I'm gonna live out in defiance All right. How about now? I think we're good now. Hey, Jeffrey, good to see you in here. <clears throat> so as I was saying, without any sound, <laughs> you got to love live. So we're going to talk about your passion for photography or why you shoot. Is it for the money? Is it for a living? Uh, do you shoot uh, something specific? Uh, if you shoot something for a living, uh, is there something you're more passionate about shooting? It's just photography in general. And I want to get everybody's ideas on, uh, or not, not ideas, but everybody's, uh, you know, pick your brain a little bit, get to know each other a little bit. So that when we're, when we're in here chatting, we can actually talk about some of those things. And, and I'll, I'll kick it off here. Uh, you know, my passion for photography started a long time ago. You know, we won't go through that whole story. Um, but about, uh, 14 years ago, I picked it up again after a long time of just leaving it off to the side, life gets in the way, you know how that goes. And, uh, so I started shooting again and I really had a good time with a little point and shoot. And then that started it all right there. Then gear acquisition kicked in. And since then I've spent a small fortune on photography, just on gear. So yeah. <laughs> Could have retired years ago, Roy, but you need to keep busy. Yeah. Diana, good to see you in here. Great to see everybody in here. And hopefully we'll get a good discussion going. Let me drop the phone number in here for those that might want to call. Hang on just a second. I'll drop this in the bottom here so everybody gets a chance if they want to to call in rather than typing all these long uh, reasons for photography out. So, Anyway, uh, I picked the camera up again, started playing with it. I had a little success with it. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I had a little success with it. I was, I was happy to be shooting again and learning a lot more about photography. I actually learned the basics in the military. I actually went to school for photography for um, a few weeks and uh, wound up shooting film and uh, developing my own black and white in my garage with a home-built uh, enlarger. So... You know, all that aside, though, the digital world is fantastic, makes it so much easier. I know there are a lot of film shooters out there that enjoy it. That really wasn't my passion developing, although there is a sense of pride in seeing that photo come to life, especially in something that's homemade and you put together, you took it from start to finish. But uh, it's more about the uh, final product. And with digital, it's just so much easier. I'm reading Joe McNally's new book, The Real Deal. And I got to tell you, if you you might want to check that out. Uh, Joe McNally is a phenomenal photographer. He's been shooting for over 40 years. Um, great storyteller. But uh, this book is about how he started from college on and how he worked his way through the ranks into from a staff, well, from a copy boy all the way through to staff photographer and then freelance photographer. Um, and I'm sure you can relate to some of that, uh, John. John Ishi's in the chat over here. So you guys want to pick his brain. Um, and it's just a, a fascinating read, or at least I think it is. It's, it, it's very, uh, it's a great story. And, 
of course, he shares a lot of his photos. I don't know how he remembers all the names. It just amazes me that he remembers all these people he worked with and for throughout his life. Uh, it, 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 I can't remember my kids' names half the time, but uh, it's a great read. But the big thing about it is I have picked up some phenomenal tips. And it's not that you don't know this. You don't know these things. I knew most of what he was talking about that I, my big takeaway though, was don't be a lazy photographer. I'll talk about that more. I'm saving that for the uh, live stream that we do over on Vihography's channel with Joe McNally coming up Tuesday night. Don't miss it at 6 PM Pacific time, 9 PM Eastern time. So ought to be a lot of fun with Joe because he is a great storyteller, but great book, great read. I think you'll get a lot out of it no matter how, good you are or think you are because that's me how good i think i am um and uh you know i i really i really enjoy it but now back to my passion and we're not going to go through you know the years of developing it and all that but my passion now for photography is something that i can't even do anymore uh with the digital age uh no magazines or all digital magazines and uh the lack of money and things like that motocross was my passion. I just love shooting it. And I always enjoyed shooting it, looking for something that nobody else sees or shoots. Now, some of the things that I would find are, th they're not showing up in, um, excuse me, in coverage because they're, even though it's unique, it's not entertainment or it's not interesting. But Every now and then, in the back of your mind, you catch something that nobody else has caught, and it is interesting. So anyway, that was my big thing with motocross. Now, getting up in the years, and again, budgets are nothing anymore for a lot of these places. So they have their own friends or family or somebody that's shooting for them for the few pictures or photos that they want to use. So that's off the table, other than local tracks and things like that. So I'm going to continue to shoot that. My other passion uh, in photography is um, therapy. Now, I know it sounds crazy, but I love sitting out behind my house. You saw the thumbnail for this uh, live stream. I have a small uh, uh, shoot uh, waterfowl refuge back there, and I get quite a few visitors. Uh, they haven't shown up yet this year, but I can go back there, set the tripod up, set a chair up, and actually be there for two or three hours, just lose track of time. And for the most part, I don't think about anything that's going on in the world, all the headlines and things like that. It's just me listening to all the sounds and everything that's going on and occasionally get a, you know, decent subject to shoot. So, uh, I, I like both. I like the run and gun, the, you know, the, uh, that craziness that is motocross and shooting, it's very physical and everything else. Uh, I love it, though, when you capture the one photo that nobody else happened to capture. It's just fun. It's very, uh, I don't know, uh, just r really, uh, there's a lot of energy in it. And by the end of the day, you're dead, but you walk away with 2,000 photos. And then the next piece to that is the fun of calling the photos. And it is fun looking for that shot that nobody else got. And then on the other hand, I, I love sitting back here at my little uh, waterfowl refuge, just uh, peacefully letting time tick away. So that's me. And that's my passion right now in photography. I also like to shoot uh, portraits. I like to shoot events and things like that. Events provide you with a little bit of that uh, exhilaration uh, that you get in motocross, but, you know, not quite so much. Um, and, and I'll shoot anything, to be honest with you. I am, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm good at everything, but I sh can shoot everything, uh, which means I'll just probably never be a master of any one of those uh, genres in photography. But what about you guys? What is it you like? What is it you shoot? And is it something, again, you shoot because it's business or, uh, and if so, what do you prefer to shoot when you just want to go out and create? So, let me look over here and see what we got in the comments. Albert, good to see you. Hassan, good to see you. Uh, 
learning to see a way the camera sees the key to a great is the key to great photography. Yes. And uh, that comes up in his book. And again, I'm going to talk about that Tuesday night. There's one piece in there about that that really struck home with me and I'm guilty of it. Oh, and one of the things you'll love about this book, if you do uh, read it, is he's not tooting his horn here about how great he is. He talks about quite a few failures as he came up through the ranks and everything else. And it's kind of comical at times, but he's honest. And uh, it's fun to listen to it because it, it helps you understand that, guess what? Even the best of the best photographers out there have bad days, bad assignments, bad photos, and everything else. And, uh, you know, you, you kind of feel a little bit better, like, okay, I have bad days, I have bad photos, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in a pretty, uh, pretty great crowd there in the likes of, uh, of our friend Joe McNally. But he also talks about, you know, the transition from film into digital and flash and lenses and all the capabilities in uh, mirrorless and as he goes through the book and it's really exciting to uh, read his uh, thoughts on how things developed so uh let's see uh, Thanks, Agnetha. Agnetha. Yeah, it is a pleasant Saturday evening because it actually warmed up above freezing here. Uh, SJ Square, good to see you. Jeffrey, let's see. If you want to see a great video, go on Nikon USA. Let me click this real quick. Go on Nikon USA, click on Learn More button for the Z Mount 85 1.8, and you can watch a video of Joe and Jerry Guionis talk, uh, taking pictures of each other. Yeah, they did have a a good time using the pool and everything else. I thought it was, a uh, it was, it was a lot of fun. I saw that when they did it. Um, I don't know how long ago it was. Uh, spend most of each day. It's Roy, Roy here. Let's throw you up here, Roy. Um, spend most of each day in the studio, but I'd love to have time to shoot wildlife and landscape. Yeah. You know, I, I, I dabbled with landscape myself, Roy. I'm just not real good at, I'm not, I don't know. It doesn't really, do a lot for me. So, but I love looking at some of these landscape photographers and I, I love the guys over in Britain, you know, uh, Paul Johnson, Jason, I can't remember his last name, Gary Go. Those guys are, are phenomenal landscape photographers and I love looking at their work. Uh, yeah. Joe certainly doesn't have a fear of heights. No, he doesn't. And he talks about that a few times in his book as well. And the story about that is really interesting. Um, and I'm not going to give it away, but again, if you, if you check out the book, it's, it's, that's a good story in itself. Uh, master of Nikon creative lighting. Yes. He, because he started out with lights that you and I probably couldn't run and talks about that talks about how you, you were lucky to walk away from a gig uh, if you were using lights without being electrocuted. So, and he, he makes a joke about that too, talking about it probably wouldn't be good if the photographer looked like a cartoon char character that just uh, had a bomb go off in front of him. Uh Joe is just a master of light. I have his other book, um, Sketching Light. I think that's the name of it. I actually have it sitting over there. And uh, if you're interested in lighting and you want to see it from his perspective, he goes through a lot of the photos that you've seen and you like. Uh, and he literally, literally has sketches in there of the lighting setup. So it's real interesting, too. It's a, it's a great head start if you haven't uh, played with lighting a lot. Um, definitely something else to check out because the sketches are there and you can try to mimic what he was doing or learn from it for what you want to do. Uh, need to get out in the bush for therapy, Roy. Yeah. I, that, I guess that's me too. Hey, Robert. Yeah. That, uh, second 450 moto didn't go the way I wanted it, but that's all right. We still have the, uh, we still have the main to go. So, <laughs> uh, Robert, we're talking about uh, Supercross. It's on tonight. Uh, Joe is the king of speed lights. Absolutely. And that's where that creative lighting system uh, came into play for Joe. He loved that. So 
Um, and I guess he's still using it. But now the question is, is uh, since Nikon said they're not going to work with or develop speed lights, I guess. So and they formed some kind of a connection with Profoto. So we'll see how that works out. Uh, yeah, Cooper Webb. Don't want to see Cooper Webb win. I want my boy ET3 in, uh, on the podium at the top spot on the podium. All right. So that's kind of my story and what I'm doing right now, as far as photography goes, um, as you guys probably know, I, I spend a lot of time checking in on YouTube and things like that, watching videos. Uh, I try to catch all the guys that have subscribed, subscribed to me, not just because they subscribe, but because I enjoy watching Uh funny story. My wife uh, walked by earlier today and I was watching a video uh, and, and she was looking, it, it was a, a portrait shoot. And she says, well, that's not very good. <laughs> and I said, well, why isn't it good? And she said, well, I don't like it. I said, well, because you don't like it doesn't mean it isn't good. So I have the same chat with my wife that I do here on uh, YouTube. Um, and, and she, she agreed. She, she understood. Um, but that's the thing. We all develop our own and, and if you're not, you should develop your own um, look, whatever you're, whatever's pleasing to you. And uh, if you're shooting for everybody else or trying to mimic everybody, man, that's a hard learning curve there because you really can't master everybody else's, uh, everybody else's, uh, you know, style or whatever. Just master your own. And that comes up in Joe's book as well, you know, trial and error. And there's a lot of error in that. Uh, but be creative. Don't follow the norms. You know, if you want to learn light, shoot lots of uh, still life or, or models or whatever you have and play with the lights. Don't go by everybody else's setup. Let that be a starting point and then start playing with light. And you'll be amazed at how much fun that is. Uh, you have some failures as you try, uh, but you'll you'll stumble across things that you realize, hey, nobody's ever talked about this. Maybe that becomes your style. So I think it's a lot of, uh, you know, it, it, it's just if it's a passion, you'll do things like that. And I have my little studio here, as you can see, some of the lights in the background. And uh, it's time for me to get back in the studio and start shooting some things with the Z9, which I have. And everything I've posted lately is all with my Z5 or, or D5, uh, D850 or D500 or something like that. Uh, photography is your therapy, uh, Jeffrey. Yeah, me too, buddy. Me too. And that's what I was talking about. Not sure it's cheaper than a shrink. Uh, you know what? It probably isn't, but it's a whole lot more fun. Uh, focus on nature and birds, uh, now, but love landscape macro done a few weddings, UGG, yeah. And car races, you know, and that's something else. As soon as I get out of here and get down, down South, I already know the area that we're going to. And there's a lot of that down there. Oh, sorry, Robert. You're talking about the races. Uh, let's see. Years ago, my wife went through all, let's see, all my slides. This is Roy, everybody. Uh, of her and deleted it. <laughs> she didn't like my wife won't even let me take a photo. And if she knows that I did, she definitely demands to see it. And there's only a couple that she's ever let me keep. Uh, and I don't know why she's gorgeous. Uh, yep. Now she regrets it. Absolutely. Because you know, those are mementos. Uh, that's the one thing about photography is capture your family and friends and things like that as you go along. They're not photos that you post or they're not award winners necessarily. But later on, you're going to be glad that you did. Make sure you archive them in a way that they will be around for a while. And of course, the best way to do that is make some prints or go to one of these print companies and have prints made and just keep them. Uh, yeah, Z9 is probably overkill for the studio. Well, it isn't for me, and I'll tell you why. Because it gives me all the latitude with the high megapixel to do what I want to do in the studio. So, and uh, I'm going to get rid of my D850 probably not too long from now. So, I need the Z9 to take the place for that. T mid, T mid, let's see. Love speed lights, Robert. 
love, let's see, love speed lights, love the way I can light a room or a large area uh, while dragging the shutter. There you go. Another technique and another thing to experiment with rear sink and incorporating ambient light. And you know, you're absolutely right, Robert. One of the things I see some of the photographers doing, um, they're, they're, you know, great photographers or good photographers or whatever you want to call them here on YouTube. And they're shooting at night outside. And instead of exposing for their background, the ambiance, if you will, they just, you know, set the light up and uh, set the exposure up on the model that they're shooting. And sometimes they are lucky that maybe they capture some of the ambience behind the model. Other times it, the model just takes over and it's almost a, you know, pure dark scene behind them. So yeah, that's one of those things that, you, you know, you need to experiment with and learn, understand, set your, set your aperture and your shutter speed uh, for the ambience, the background, the out of focus area, the light orbs or whatever is in the background. And then tailor your light to the model without changing those settings. It sounds crazy, but you'll be amazed at the difference it makes in your photos. Ah, uh, let's see. Got to use the Z9 past. Oh, there you go. Got to use the Z9 this past weekend. I'm in love. All right, man. Uh, you'll have to tell us about it, brother. I'm, you know, I, I love it too. I, I was a little, I won't say disappointed, but a little saddened in the beginning because I was asking the camera to do something no other camera can do, but uh, have since learned. And now I'm really happy, especially after going out to the motocross track. So it's a phenomenal camera. <laughs> John Ishi, here you go. Photojournalist, folks. SB26, wow, save me more times. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think you talked about it the other night when, when you were on the uh, show, uh, John. You know, not having, if you don't have a speed light with you all the time, then I, I think you're just missing opportunities. And I know you can elaborate on that, John, from a photojournalist point of view, especially. But uh, you'd be amazed at how often. Now, using a speed light, get it, play with it. Because there's so many applications for that speed light other than just direct burst in the face. There's a whole lot of ways to use it and bounce and everything else. And if you're not trying it, you need to. I know a lot of people say, well, I'm a natural light shooter. Okay. Yeah. Natural light's beautiful. You can see on the screen right over here, this is natural light and it, it's a, it's a beautiful photo. I got lucky, although she's squinting a little bit. Why is that? Maybe the sun's almost in her face. So, uh, but the point is, is that, uh, don't be afraid of, uh, speed lights and strobes and all these different light modifiers and everything else get it and experiment with it get you a, a you know a, a reasonable speed light and start playing with it you're going to be amazed at what you can do with it it's going to pull you out of a bind sometimes when nothing else will so uh let's see hmm. got a lot of comments coming in let's see jeffrey uh oh it's something i said this might not be good Oh, yeah. I shoot for myself and make myself happy. Yeah, I'm fortunate enough to have people uh, that like my work. I feel blessed. Don't make any dollars, but give images to friends and family. Yeah. And that's you, you're basically saying the same thing that I'm doing most of the time, uh, Jeffrey. Uh, I do that quite a bit. Uh, shoot for people, as a matter of fact. But this is a uh, quid pro quo. I'm having my stepdaughter come down this month and uh she needs some thumbnails for her uh her uh, web page for her business and uh we're gonna trade i'm gonna give her her thumbnails and i'll do this live i'm gonna do it it's gonna be an afternoon shoot so we're gonna start at uh 12 noon and i'm gonna have the studio set up and i'll explain what i'm doing and at some point though i'm gonna quit shooting her thumbnails and that means rearranging some things in the studio and i want to go creative that's what i enjoy the thumbnails are okay but uh you guys that can join i hope you do and uh, ask a lot of questions and have a lot of comments you know let me know what you think or what you think i might do differently so uh oh 
<laughs> Charles, switching over to Chad, be right back. All right. I'll let him tell the story behind Chad and Charles. Uh, so, T Mid, tell me about your experience with the Z9. Let's hear about that. Yes, Roy Nikon's always, you're right. They've always made uh, great speed lights. Uh, there was a little bit of uh, uproar over the SB900, I guess, because it tended to get hot in repetitive shooting. So I know a lot of people complained and they melted their strobe or their speed light, but I don't know. Maybe other speed lights would have done the same thing. There you go. Let's see, Robert. Ex exactly, Chuck. They kill the ambient light. Yep. And all their 500 plus photos they take are just, they, they do. They look the same. So, and this goes back to the book that I, as I was talking about uh, Joe. Joe says in his book, in one portion, he said, you can look through the viewfinder and you know that you know that you know that it isn't right. But you think you're pushed for time or you're worried about the subject, uh, the, you know, the person uh, being anxious and uh, many other things may interfere. But you become lazy and you say, well, I'm going to shoot it anyway. Instead of taking the time to change a lens, pull a shade maybe. If you're using natural light or change a light, change a light position or change the subject's location. And I'm guilty of that. And that's the big takeaway I've gotten so far out of this book is I need to stop sometimes instead of being lazy and saying, well, I'll fix it in post. Then the whole way home, I'm thinking, well, maybe the little uh, magicians in the camera will adjust this. Or maybe I didn't see it right on the LCD on the back of the camera. Maybe it's better than I remember and get home and put it on the big screen, the big monitor. And it's like, nope, it's even worse now. So taking the time to adjust whatever it is you need to adjust is a big deal. And you're so much happier. Now he talks about that where it cost him money for me, you know, I may lose a friendship or something because I didn't get what they wanted. Um, but, uh, when you're shooting for, you know, a client or, or a big client and you walk away and you take it home and you know, well, this, you, you do your best in post to try to do something that's nowadays with digital. It wasn't that way in the film days and, uh, you just can't make it any better, but you send it off in hopes that it's going to fly and you get that phone call. Like, what were you thinking? No. And those photos aren't going to run or whatever. Um, so, yeah. And I don't know how I got back on that. Oh, with the ambient light at night. Please yourself and you'll please a whole lot of others. Take the time. Set the camera up right. Then apply your light to the subject. And you'll be amazed at some of the photos that you walk away with. Uh, yeah. And that's another good point. Um, Roy, get it off the camera unless you're a journalist. Nowadays, it's easy to get even your speed light off of your camera. Now, Nikon has an accessory that you can put on the camera that will control the speed light. But beyond that, all you have to do is buy a controller, buy, uh, you know, buy into Godox or even Profoto now. Um, I think Westcott, uh, uh, Flashpoint, which is Godox, rebranded for Adorama, but at least you get a, a decent uh, uh, warranty buying Flashpoint. But the point is, is that you can do a lot with that speed light off camera with just that little controller. And yes, experiment with that. That's where you really begin to see your creativeness come out. You're not different than anybody else. You haven't discovered something that everybody else doesn't know about. You've finally broken the mold of, I'm going to get this thing off the camera and I'm going to start using it uh, to uh, be more creative in my portraits. I like moody portraits. You don't have to do that with off-camera flash, but I like that. So absolutely, folks, get out there and experiment. Uh Robert, yeah, I love off-camera flash. I do too. I got a, I got strobes galore, speed lights. I've probably got six speed lights, all different brands. I've got a two Nikon, the SB900 and SB910, and then I don't know how many others of different brands. Uh, here we go. 
So John says, take a look at Bill Allard work using a cheap Vivitar flash in his book on Cuba. There you go. I'll check it out. I'll definitely check it out, John, because I'm all about, you know, continuing to learn. Well, I got a lot to learn, so I should be about continuing to learn. Uh, but I have experimented. And, and again, sometimes it's like, yeah, I don't know. That, that's not too cool. But Oftentimes, I find something that I really like. It doesn't mean everybody else is going to like, but this is using strobes or flash, artificial light. And uh, I find that sometimes a lot of people, other people like it as well. I don't go into the, I don't care about the the critiquers, you know, the experts. The I've been shooting a camera for two years now, and I've shot 89 weddings, and I'm a pro. And, you know, uh, you, your white balance is off. And I, you know what? unless I ask you to entertain me with your critique, don't, because if I like it, I show it and, uh, I'm not shooting for anybody else. Uh, but you're going to get that with your, especially with, uh, flash early on, you're going to get everybody in the world is going to critique you and tell you what you did wrong and what you should do. Um, take it with a grain of salt, listen to what they have to say about what you, they think you did wrong. And it may be something you can correct, but don't let the correction get in the way of your creative eye. And I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You'll make a name for yourself and have a style after you've done it and you can repeat it. Key word here, repeat it. You have to be able to repeat it if you want to use that style with other people, which means repetitiveness. That means practice. That means shooting a lot. It's digital. Who cares? Joe talks about that too. What's a digit cost? Nothing. <laughs> You paid for the digits already when you bought the camera. So more great advice from Joe. Uh, let's see. Nikon no longer, uh, no longer developing speed lights. It's horrible. They're quality units. Yep, they are. Don't do a lot of ports, portraits, but outdoors, I like to expose for ambient light and use fill light. Yeah, there you go. And, and if you're, if you're a natural light shooter, Meaning you don't, you're afraid of flash. You don't have to tell anybody that you are, but if it is, you're afraid of flash or speed lights or strobes, get one and start experimenting with it. Because the key word there with Jeffrey is fill light. And you can put a person in the shade. You can do all kinds of things, but you can't enhance that. Well, you can at times, you can get lucky. Okay. Well, maybe not lucky. Maybe you're a pro at natural light and you can figure out how to find that portion in natural light that works for you. Uh, this is outdoors. Indoors is its own animal with all the different color lights, different type lights and everything else uh, being used in the, is, is ambient light. Uh, but get, get a, get a, uh, a, a small cheap uh, speed light, put it on your camera and try it. Try it outdoors. Try that fill light. Fill light is key and watch everything start to bloom for you. And it's like, whoa, I, I never realized I could actually make this photo look even better. And I don't mean to say you need to be reliant on uh, artificial light or speed lights or whatever. You don't. But you're going to find it's a whole other world that you get to play with, and it will bring you more business if that's what you're looking for and you're not using it already. All right. And you guys disagree with anything I'm saying because I know there's a lot of people in here that are well-seasoned uh, photographers. Uh, John, you know, uh, talking here about, you know, his SB26. Uh, uh, let's see. And T-Mid. I'm going to pop it up here without even reading it. Here we go. I'm dropping a video on my channel soon with my results. I used it at a photo shoot at the Valley of Fire during WPPI. Okay, great, great. And T-Mid, I know you guys are using, you're carrying out strobes that you're using for a lot of outdoor shoots. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. Um, at least you guys are out there experimenting and using them. Uh, but I've seen a couple of videos and some of your shootouts where it, I just think, oh man, you guys have missed a great opportunity here out in the street with the, uh, at night with uh, all the shops lights in the background and the street lights and uh, traffic lights and so on and so forth, man, 
uh, set your exposure for that ambient light and you can set it anywhere you want as dark or as much light as you want. You got a flash and you're going to freeze the action uh, unless it's a super slow shutter and you may get some ghosting uh, dragging the shutter that way. But my point is, is that it changes the whole photo. All of a sudden it really comes to life because the subject is now in the environment. And uh, I love seeing that. I love photos on the street at night like that. So, all right. Uh, oh, here you go. <laughs> the explanation. Dad and grandfather were both were both Charles. Uh, see, where's Charles Hugh, Edward, David, Chad. Been called that all my life. Okay, so uh, confession here for me, Chad, Charles. Chuck or Charles is nowhere in my real name. Nowhere. Um, why I, I asked that as a child, uh, never got an explanation. My mother says we just started calling you Chuck. I mean, she wasn't a fan of my father. Who, they divorced when I was four. Not a sad story. It's long gone. Uh, but anyway, so Chuck is not in my real name. Oh. Uh, Terry. Okay, so just so you guys know, if you're not following him or don't know him, Terry Breedlove, he's a film shooter also, and uh, he's fantastic. So you guys want to check him out on Facebook. Uh, he, he posts a lot of his photos quite often, and uh, I, I love it, man. I, I, I love film as well which if you get Joe's book, you're going to love some of those film shots. And guess what? Noise, get ready. If you're, if you're annoyed by noise, if you think it's bad in digital or something like that, wait till you see film if you've never shot film. Because especially a photojournalist, John, you can weigh in here. Sometimes the noise is great or it's okay. Other times it's get the shot. Damn the torpedoes and the noise. So, uh, and you know what? We grew up seeing that in newspaper print and everything else. And I know newspaper print is fine because who's going to see it anyway. Um, but I like a little noise sometimes. I got I got to be honest. I don't know. It just does, especially in black and white. Uh, oh, I never even talked about your uh, comment there. SB 900. Get, got real hot. Yeah, I would shut down. Yep, during a wedding event. Uh, first time really bummed me out. Changed batteries and used another one until it cooled off. Yeah, and that was the rule for the SB900 was you just it hits a point where it's going to overheat and you just had to shut it down. I never had that problem with my SB900 because I wasn't shooting anything where I was, you know, for for an hour you know, nonstop shooting with the SB 900 continuously. So I kind of escaped that horror, but I know a lot of people, wedding photographers, as you, as Terry was saying, have had that issue. Uh, oh, already been there. Here we go. Z nine. IAF was so stickier than gorilla glue. Ha huh? Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, and, and I think that's one of the th takeaways I have now with the Z9 as well. Yes, the uh, I, IAF in humans, you know, people is just fantastic with that camera. A lot of people are already saying things about uh, the uh, IAF or animal tracking or birds and, you know, so on and so forth. Well, you know what? You got to – I think a lot of people are afraid to uh, pull the trigger because the tracking box may be behind the subject a little bit or, or tagging along. Guess what? The photo's in uh, focus. Uh, don't let the little box confuse you right now. Uh, get the shot. You'll be amazed at how many of those shots are actually in focus. It's just maybe in the algorithm of the stickiness of the box is uh, running a little bit behind or slow. And uh, if that's a showstopper for you, then, you know, don't buy the Z9, don't buy an A1, don't buy R5, don't buy any of those. You know, if, if you can't live with that, just forget it. You know, you, your photo's in focus, folks. It just, the box may not be exactly where you want it as you're panning and tracking and everything else. 
At least that's been my experience so far. But with humans and eyes, the only problem with uh, people is if you're in a crowd, it does want to jump on other eyes. So their 3D tracking is a lot of help. It'll just stick to the eye you want. Uh, let's see. What was that to me? So cool. Be looking forward to your new photo shoot video. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I will too. Agnetha, he's always shooting something, isn't he? Uh, Jeffrey never had the SB900, just the 700 and 800 with no issues. Um, uh, Chad asked, you going to buy the Z9 T-Mid? I think he'd already said he wants one. He'll have one. He'll have one. Terry Breedlove, 800 was the best. Uh... uh Uh, yeah, you're hoping for a Z8? Yeah, we need to have a chat about that, too. There's a, That's all over the place now, people's ideas. And it's not going to arrive for two years. What foolishness. It's going to surprise everybody, I'll tell you right now. Uh... Oh, my kitty cat's in here wanting to, uh, he knows I'm live. Hang on. Come on, make your debut, or not debut, but your appearance. Come on, little boy. Uh, yeah, he's just a little guy. Look at the, look, look at everybody. Look at everybody. So here I am, just purring away. <laughs> all right you got to get down now you got to get down yeah uh, and you're happy now aren't you sorry about that interruption but he would just drive us all crazy if i didn't pick him up for a minute i swear he knows that i'm live when he does this uh nice to have different speed lights uh yeah, you're absolutely right, Agnetha. That's why I have a box full of them upstairs. I haven't used them in a long time um, in the studio. I I, I use uh, I use one every now and in the studio if I want to uh, paint the background with uh, color or something like that. Here you go, T Mid. I've seen you do this several times. If you really want color on your background, you need a dark background. Sounds counterintuitive, doesn't it? But if you want a saturated color on that background to really come through, you need a dark background uh, to light it with that color. Uh, you can do it with a white background, but you get a pastel color. You don't get a very deep, dark, saturated color. Just so you guys know, um, I learned that on my own, just experimenting. And then actually somebody told me that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Oh, SB900, let's see, heavy, let's see, I wrecked a few hot shoes with the SB900. Robert, okay. Uh, let's see. An old flash bracket. There you go. Guess what? Uh, uh, Vitali, um, Oh, shoot. Touch Life Studios uses a flash bracket right now. So they're not totally gone. I like it because uh, I, I, I like it also because it gets the flash up and out of the way. And you can move it off axis ever so slightly. Um, axis meaning not straight on, but a little off axis with the bracket. Ah, okay, okay, Robert. Sling straps on cameras had the SB900 upside down on the hot shoe. Yep, I can see that. And you know what? I have actually run around on a motocross track. There you go, outdoors, bright sunlight, everything else. I carried a flash. It usually had it on camera for a while um, because 
with the bright sun and everything else, it was either they're going to, the sun's going to blow out the, the subject, the rider. I mean, this is usually, uh, not when they're racing. I didn't use it when they were racing, but when the race was over and they take the podium guys up to the podium and everything else. Yeah. I used a, I used a, a flash. I used the SB 900, uh, at the time. And, um, not just the SB 900, but, uh, shooting with the 1424 and motocross for those close up shots, but needed flash. And I, I actually banged out some great photos with that rig, uh, strobes have batteries. Yeah. This is the big thing. So I don't know. I, I didn't mean to get stuck on lighting and everything else. However, if you guys are enjoying it, we'll just stick with it. Uh, because I enjoy it. I enjoy talking about light. I enjoy, uh, actually, uh, playing with lighting, you know, uh, in the studio and I've done all kinds of stuff. I've, you know, lights overhead, feathering light, this, that, and everything else. If you're in a real, real small studio, it is a bit difficult. I understand that, but there's, you can also bounce light. You can flag light. And for those of you that may not know, I know most of you probably do, you know, putting a, a counterfill, uh, a flag up to cut light and they call them flags or cutters just to cut light in certain areas. I was watching, I'd thought about trying this a long time ago. I was uh, watching, oh, I'm trying to think of her name right now. She's a big Canon Sony uh, fan. Um, I can't remember her name, but she did uh, checkerboard lighting. And I'd seen that before. So I'm going to try that next. I'm going to try doing some checkerboard lighting. It's it's unique. It's it, it, it can be used in the fashion uh, community, um, but I'm going to try it where the subject, the face is lit on the dark side of the background. I know it sounds crazy. Check it out, you know, and you'll see what I'm talking about. And on the light side of the background, the face is dark. So they call it checkerboard lighting. And it's very unique and it's kind of fun to play with. Uh, Mosman, Southern Cal. Oh, that's right. You guys went shooting today. Just returned after dinner. All right, man. Did you have a good time? I know you were out playing with the big lenses. I'm sure he's extremely happy. So glad you guys got out to shoot. Looking forward to a video that he's probably going to put out on that and photos to follow. So welcome tonight, buddy. Uh, little Phil will sharpen up an image. Yep, you're absolutely right. And these are all the things that I think we think we know what we're doing with Flash, but we're always we can always learn, especially from those that have been using it for a long time. Definitely me. I can definitely learn. Uh, but again, what is photography? First of all, photography is nothing but light. Think about it. It's just light hitting the sensor. And without it, you have nothing. So lighting is everything. Get good at it, make money with it. That's my tip for the night. Get good at it and make money with it. Uh, um, I could be wrong, but the only people that can get away with shooting without flash are landscape and wildlife photographers. Yeah, you know what? You're right. But think about this. How many of those folks, and I don't necessarily like it unless it's done extremely well, but light painting for landscapes. I've seen that. Um, it doesn't work real well all the time. You really have to be good at it, I think. Uh, but you're right. You're pretty, I mean, that's that's almost an absolute, almost. I have used my flash setting up uh, a location for the birds to land and eat uh, with a good background and uh, use flash on those birds and i learned from it if you get the if you get the exposure right on the bird it is superb if not then it looks like a deer in the headlights or shooting somebody with a, a flash you know full bore or whatever so yeah i, I hear you albert you're right uh let's see team ed 
Let's see. I agree. In Vegas at night, I use the modeling lamp on the strobe, so you get all the ambient lighting in the shot. Yeah. Was a, was the what kind of shutter speed did you get? Are you saying that you use the modeling light as the uh, main light uh, shooting? Um, and I guess you could do that if there's enough ambient light, you know. And I know with a lot of the storefronts and things like that, or whatever. Uh, there may have been a lot of ambient light, artificial ambient light. So I could see how that would work. But I, I see an issue with shutter speed there, trying to, at shooting your lowest ISO, I know, or not lowest ISO, um, you're definitely having to shoot with some ISO. That's interesting. Can't wait to see the shots, T-Mid. Take keys, Uncle Chuck. Yes, yes. Yes, my nephew. How can I help you? <laughs> oh. uh. Let's see. Maybe Chuck is what you did a lot as a kid. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea, Roy. I don't know why I came up with that or get, got that as a nickname. But all my life, I didn't know what my name was, honestly, until I went to first grade. And I had to write my name down, which I could at the time. Not very well, but I could. And the teacher told me that was not my name, which is really unusual to have the teacher tell you that it's not your name. Phone line is open, Mosman. Let me put the number up. Let me put the number up. And you're welcome to call. Just be ready. We are live. And you know, sometimes things just don't go as great as they could. Ah, uh, Sekonic meters will meter up to one one thousandths and H in high speed sync uh, for outdoors. Okay. Yeah, Ted, uh, you know what? I have a Sekonic meter, the 306, 307, something like that. I can't remember. Great light meter. I'm not buying a new one. It's not the newest, but it's not that old. And it, it is a great, it gives you a great start point. Uh, Joe talks about that in his book too. TTL becomes a light meter for us if we know how to use it. It gives us a baseline, and then you go full manual using the settings you, that TTL established, and uh, you can work from, from there. So, uh, In my studio, for what I'm doing with people, I can get pretty daggone close to a decent exposure, but depending on the person and what kind of lighting I'm using, then I go into my experimental mode and start changing things a little bit. And that's one of the other things is, is everybody, I, I'm not doing this to insult anybody. Does everybody know? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Here it is. All right. You there? Can you hear me? Remember that commercial? I can't hear you. Hang on a second. And try it again. How are you? There we go. I'm good. Is this uh, Mosman? Or, or? <laughs> Mosman's next to uh, me. No, I can hear you now. I can hear you now. I can hear you, uh, Vahagan. Can everybody else hear Vahagan? How are you? How are you guys? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah, I got Mosman next to me here. Hi, Mosman. Say hi. How's it going, Chuck? Hey, it's going great. You guys have a good time today? We did, man. We had some we had some fun. Uh, the weather wasn't very cooperative, but uh, we still had a good time. Well, well, don't come to Connecticut if you're looking for cooperative weather because we have none here. Yeah, we had a good time, man. We were shooting, and uh, I got to meet Moz, and uh, it was a great time. <laughs> great, man. I'm glad you guys had a good time. Looking forward to what you're going to put together to show us. Yeah, we had uh, we just had a nice steak dinner. Oh, that after. sounds good too. At Houston, <laughs> Ryan Troy says, "What's going on, Vahagan? Hey, Ryan, what's up, brother? <laughs> I, I saw Ryan's latest video. Yeah, I watched his live tonight. Uh, I watched your live tonight, Ryan. It was good." Oh, oh, Ryan had a live. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, me, Mozman hanging out in Southern California, taking some pictures with, it was all Nikon, man. 
It was like it was like a Nikon clinic today, huh? Yeah, it was crazy. Everybody we saw shooting, and this never happens, had a Nikon. Wow, that's inspiring. Everybody, it was like we didn't see. We only saw probably one Canon, and that was about it. It was everybody had the Nikon, Nikon, Nikon. Wow. It was wow. like we died in heaven today, Chuck. Man, I guess you guys did have a good time. <laughs> yeah, so I was telling Maz, I'm like, hey, when you get situated in Tennessee, we're going to come do a road trip. Yeah, you know? man. Yeah, yeah. you guys want to do that. We'll, you'll definitely have to come down there. We can have a ball. We've got uh, a little bit to shoot down there in Tennessee. We'll go to Bonnaroo together. There you Pretend go. We're in- again. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> Oh, uh, John Ish, Ishi says hello, uh, Vahagan. Hello, everyone. Hello. Uh, we just, uh, you know, we sorry we drank some wine and we have a good time, but uh, we'll let you guys do your thing and uh, we're watching over here. <laughs> All right, man. Sounds good. Well, he, he said he loves, John said he loved your video about your assistant who threw you under the bus. <laughs> I loved it, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another yeah, entertaining not- tale from the wedding woes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Hopefully, uh, photographers that haven't went through all that would learn a thing or two and just know what to watch out for if anything like that ever happens to them. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I mean, I, I'm I'm certain that's why you do it so that everybody can learn from, uh, you know, what happened to you. Yeah. So, anyway, guys. So, yeah. Keep on rocking, Chuck. Yes, sir. Keep on rocking. All right. You guys have a good time and sit back and enjoy the show. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Miles. Absolutely. Thanks, Chuck. All right, brother. Have a good time. Thank you, Rock. Rock and roll, everyone. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. All right, here we go. Uh, man, I'm catching up here. Uh, Agnetha, I didn't see your comment till just now. I would have passed it on, but of course, he's on the other end. They're watching, so let's see. You're welcome, Ryan. It was I. I try to keep up with you guys as much as I can. I'm getting so many people now that I've subscribed to. It's kind of hard to catch everybody's videos and lives. Um, Somebody had asked me about being somewhere Tuesday night and, or typically I would love to tune in with what's going on. I think it was uh, Ronald Lee from uh, Nikon Z9 uh, pros or whatever his page is on uh, Facebook. And I had to say, no, I'm sorry. I can't because I'm actually going to be on a lot live stream so again for those of you that are in here uh vihography let's see vihography talk i don't know what number this is 22 i'm sure he I, the the reminder card's already out there uh that's tuesday night 6 p.m uh pacific time 9 p.m eastern and uh i'll be in there as well we're gonna have joe mcnally i mean anybody wants to ask him a question that'll be the best opportunity so he's going to be talking about his new book too so the reason i I wanted to read it but i do like joe and you know regardless uh let's see brie images photography how you doing dear good to see you in here uh yeah, the models you had, Ryan, were, were beautiful models. See, I can't get that here. I uh, I need I need some models. I need models. Anybody in the Danbury, Connecticut area, or even Hartford or whatever, that would like to model, uh, here's your chance. You get to walk away with you know a few portraits that are edited and everything else. Uh, I just haven't shot in so long. I'm begging now. It's terrible. While I'm begging, please drop some likes on the live stream if you would. And if you're in here and you haven't subscribed, uh, please consider doing. If you enjoy these things, you know, subscribe and you'll get a reminder when we're going live. You don't even need that with me because I'm trying to be diligent about consistency. And I'm on every Saturday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. 
and Wednesday afternoon at 12 noon Eastern. So if you don't see a reminder, just tune in. If you're looking for a chat or whatever, tune in uh, in those time slots and you'll likely find me on here live. So, uh, yeah, Jeffrey, not a chance of me talking my wife into doing it. No, but we've had that conversation. I, I, I quit asking a long time ago. Every now and then I can get her to come in and she'll hold her hand over her face uh, just so I can get set up for something. Oh, Bri, I need you to come over here and model and shoot. That's what I need. Uh, we'll trade places. I don't know why anybody would want to see shots of an old man like me, but uh, good practice, good work, and uh, at least we can get some get some studio work done. Oh, and here we go. Another tip from Albert: When you're shooting with a flash or strobe without assistance, a variable friction arm, magic arm, is a, is a godsend. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And you know, I was going to do that. I've said this over on. I've got a Facebook page, folks, that I manage. It's uh, Nikon. Uh, amateurs group, Nikon amateurs group on Facebook. And you guys are welcome over there too. come in, drop photos. We're, we're, we're not going to harass people. If somebody says, Hey, what do you think? Uh, could you critique it or give some uh, positive or some critique on this image? Then, you know, we'll do it. But in a way that's not, uh, that's not, uh, you know, damaging to their whatever, Know, trying to give positive critiques and and share what you got. We don't care. You know, if you're a professional and you're dropping, you know, professional photos, that's fantastic because we all learn from that as well. But if you're not and you're not sure about it, you know, come in and share your photos there. It's a safe place to go share photos and not get beat up by the critics in all the forums. Okay. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, John, I, I've I, I had considered uh, model mayhem, but you know, right now, I, I don't know. That may be my only choice. Uh, <laughs> Roy says he needs a reminder about the shows. Okay, and Ryan Troy, uh, Anita Sadowski or uh, Sadowska moved to Connecticut. Hmm. Wonder if she'd be interested in doing a photo shoot. That would be fun. Uh I'm not the face you want. Yeah, well, you never know. You never know, Bree. Um, the only time my wife uh, threatens me is if I try to take her picture. That's Jeffrey. Yep, yep, same here. Oh, if I get a camera near her, she'll don't point that thing at me. Uh, but I can't blame her, I guess. I mean, yeah, I can because she's gorgeous. and and But I like being on the side of the camera that I'm typically on. Which is really unusual because I'm not, I wasn't comfortable at all with doing these live streams, but I kind of got to the point now where I just, nah, I don't care. Uh, you get a cheap stand. Yeah, there's all kinds of things. You're absolutely right, Roy. And, and everybody, you know, all these tips are good for anybody out there that hasn't shot with strobe or anything else. And you're considering picking up a speed light. Listen to all these tips. And that's the one thing about chat doing a live stream is there's so much information that comes out in the chat because there's so many, ex so much experience there. Um, and, you know, jot these things down. Give them a try. Uh, you're going to surprise yourself. If you're really wanting to expand and you haven't tried these things, then give it a go. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Roy, you got a mannequin. Um, yeah, it doesn't complain or talk back. I thought about doing that as well. Um, and that's great. That's a great teacher for those that want to uh, begin playing with light. Uh, if you go over to Anthony Toglife, um, he, he, he gives a great explanation on a lot of lighting and things like that. He's very good at uh, short instruction on certain subjects, and he uses a mannequin. And that does help. It, it gives you immediate feedback. It's, it's really good. Uh, John Ishi. When I croak, no one will find any pics of me other than the wedding pics because I'm always behind the camera. You know, I am too, uh, 
or Jeffrey. I am too, Jeffrey, uh, except for here. You know, I guess I'll have to play a YouTube video to, you know, one of my past live streams to show everybody who I am. Uh, oh, uh, oh, thank you, John. I did that. That's, that's me in the studio using the timer on the camera and playing around. That's, that's what I have to experiment with is me. Uh, but uh, I got it dialed in to what I actually wanted. It, it was just one of those things. I got the light the way I wanted it, and it came out well after many takes, mind you. Some of the back of my head as I was still trying to get to the chair. <laughs> but that's what I have to work with, me. And I would love to have somebody around quite often that would be willing to step in as a as a model. Mm, but thank you very much. Uh, mannequins are great for setting up. Yep. And you know, my mannequin is, I have a light stand and I put a hat or something on it. Uh, sometimes that's what I do to focus or set up and whatever. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to have an assistant, but that's not even a thought for me. I'd like to find somebody to work with that would enjoy coming by from time to time to play in the studio. That would be good. Uh, Jeff and Leslie Wildlife. Uh, never had a deer or butterfly try to sue me because it didn't like the way the photos turned out. Absolutely, Jeffrey. You, you know, you're safe there. And, uh, you know, you, you're, you're not. Uh, I guess if you were a wildlife shooter shooting back in the day, I don't even know if the wildlife magazines even have staff or freelance photographers, but. If you're shooting back then on an assignment, it might be a bit different. Not suing you, but uh, polystyrene head is very cheap. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I know a makeup artist. Maybe I ought to ask her if she's got anything like that. Because I know she styles wigs and things for people. Um, and that's, my, that's the ultimate goal, actually. I want to do a theme shoot because I love that. Uh, where I have a set, set up a set, have a makeup artist, and... Uh, try to find, I want some period clothes and, uh, try to do a shot, uh, like that. And, and I will do that eventually. Uh, I love seeing the photographers that do that stuff. Uh, let's see. And yeah, we're caught up with all those. All right. Yeah. Everyone has their own brand now. You're absolutely right. And that's what I'm trying to let people know is, uh, especially those that are new, uh, don't get caught up in somebody else's uh, style or, you know, just form your own and you do that through experimenting, uh, or, and in addition to what you like, and I'm not going to tell you, don't shoot what you like. If you're shooting, if you want to make a business out of photography, then you're going to have to bend some ways Initially, if you make a name for yourself in photography based on your style or your your uh, brand or whatever, that would be fantastic because people know what they're getting when they walk in the door. They seek you out based on what they've seen and you don't have to worry about those things. So I think that would be the best way to go, but you may not get a lot of business up front. You got to make a name for yourself. And if you're doing it through your own brand or your own style, if it's that much different than everybody else, just stick with it and it will happen. All right. Courage Studios Photography. All right. How you doing, Sky? Good to see you in here. I hope you're doing well, brother. Uh, all right. Uh, Jeffrey, you never got into serious portraits, and that's okay, or street photography, and that's okay. I wanted to sell an image. I didn't want to deal with the model releases. Absolutely. Birds don't have to sign anything. You're absolutely right. And that is another consideration when you're doing all that stuff. You're right. If you're doing it for business. Street photography, not so much because they're in the public domain. I mean, they could ask you not to print their face if it shows up or whatever in a but there's all kinds there are all kinds of videos out there talking about how you can go about street photography, uh, asking people if it's okay, this, that, and whatever. 
But in the public domain, you know, people don't have a right to privacy in public domain. There are some things that may trump that. You just have to check for the location that you're shooting and see what what's what. Uh, I've got a couple of I got a few street images that I really like. I did that down in uh, down in uh, New York City. Um, I need to get back down there and shoot some more street photography in New York City. It's a lot of fun just running around in the city for a while, and then I want to go home and get out of the city. Photo me, Ike. How you doing, buddy? Uh, you guys had a great time out in WPPI in Las Vegas. My wife was even talking about going to Vegas, just not during this time for WPPI. It's a shame, but for something else later on in, 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 in late April or May, I think. I can't remember. J. Mitch Vision. Let's see. Appreciate your content, brother. I hope the move is going well. Thank you very much. Well, I appreciate that, talking about the content. It's all over the place, but uh, we have a good time in here. So hopefully others will find us and want to join in and have a good time too. Trying to keep a you know a good community going here. Uh, but thank you very much. Uh, all the big guns showing up tonight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm... Uh, yeah, you know, I'm the I'm the small fry in this bunch. That's all of you. Uh, when's the next WPPI? I guess about the same time next year, uh, uh, Sky, for WPPI. Uh, we really don't have a lot of great uh, shows this year. We're still fighting the aftermath of COVID or something. You know, the Javits Center, which one is it that's down at the Javits Center? That's coming up later on in the year. I won't be here this time, I hope, but I uh, really wanted to get down there for that. I can't remember which show it is. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, yeah, WPPI. There you go. Portrait and wedding. Um, so, I mean, Let's keep the chat going, but, uh, you know, the whole, whole thing I, I was going to do tonight was just get in there and talk about what you love. What is your passion in photography? What uh, makes you want to pick a camera up, uh, whether it's business or pleasure? Uh, what is it? And, and if it's business, be, because you have to, then what's your pleasure in shooting? Uh, what's fun to you? Uh Oh, you were talking, <laughs> yeah, how naive am I? I thought you were talking about WPPI, Roy. Maybe you are, and I'll embarrass myself here, but uh, I hope our show is a good show. All right. Yeah, I want to pick up some more subscribers so I can get those uh, polls, put the polls out. I can't do anything till I get above 500 subscribers. That's a shame. You know, they could have put that in for us peons. They could have given us that. You know, I don't care about the uh, monetization, but I'd like to have those other key features. I guess that's supposed to provide some incentive for you to push hard. I don't, you, you don't have any control over subscribers, though. Why would YouTube do that? Oh, well. Uh, Chad, passion was auto racing. Now I'm limited to landscape and sunsets. Well, I understand that, too. Yeah, you know, I, I actually did shoot a little... Uh, uh, auto racing, uh, here in Connecticut, we have Lime Rock. And if you're, you know, a follower of, I don't know what, what is that? It's not formula racing, but whatever. Um, yeah, I've got Lime Rock. That's only about an hour and 15 minutes away. I've been up there a couple of times. It's kind of limited for me to shoot up there. Uh, you know, I, I didn't have at the time, big lenses and you really need a big lens for that. Uh, so portraits, if you're, you're, you, you want to be a portrait photographer, then bring it up because I know that we've got people in here that do that and can probably provide all kinds of tips. Ryan, are you still in here? Mr. Ryan Troy paging Ryan Troy, Ryan Troy to the chat box, Mr. Ryan Troy, would you please respond in the chat box? And the reason I'm paging you, Ryan is you know, I want to get you on my show and talk about the business of photography. You do that so well. Um, thanks, John. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere. That's for sure. Um, 
I mean, I, I'll be here without subscribers if that's the case, just because I'm having fun. Now, if it ever becomes, you know, a, a pain or boring or whatever, then who knows? But right now I'm really having a good time with this. Yeah, Ryan, I want to get you on the show, man. Make a commitment right here in front of everybody. Right here. I know you went back to work, man, but right here, you and I on a show so that you can talk to everybody that's considering photography as a business. And, and now more than ever, I think you have all the fuel in the world to help somebody out. So there you go. I trust you that much, man. I've seen your show enough and I've seen you talk about that enough. I want to get you on here. Uh, all right. All right. So we're going to set it up, Ryan. We're going to set it up. I think Saturday night's the time that you could do this. So uh, you let me know when you got a Saturday night free and you're ready to do it. And uh, we're going to get in here and talk business, man. I'm going to let you help us all understand that startup. Not, you know, being a successful business already, but the startup. So everybody understands all these little things that they need to consider to get the ball rolling. I appreciate it. And I know a lot of people would, too. Uh, let's see. You guys get on Ryan. Make sure he does this because it's for you. Uh, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Leslie's going to be in Connecticut. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Next week, visiting her sitter. Well, the last thing she'd probably want to do is come in here and fumble around light stands and everything with me. However, if that's the case, then definitely let me know. Uh... All right, Ryan, I'm going to count on it. You can let me know, man. You, you, my email's all over the place. I can even put it up right here. Uh, so just give me a, shoot me an email. Let me know. Uh, let's see. Jeffrey, I enjoy the challenges of bird photography. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do too when I have birds. You guys have wonderful birds, man. Everybody has great birds but me. I got geese and what else? Ducks. I did see a couple of ducks today, so the ducks are coming back. That's that's good. Osprey in a tree. I fell in the sea, dived, and I captured it coming up with a fish in each talon. Wow. Patience is mandatory. Absolute, excuse me, hiccups. Patient is mandatory. Any kind of wildlife, I think everybody's going to tell you that. If, they've, if, if they're shooting wildlife, they're going to tell you right up front, patience is necessary, so... Uh, Ryan deserves to be in the show 100%. Yeah, absolutely. He does. He does smart guy. And uh, I love having smart people on here and you know what? And, and, and uh, nobody take offense to this. I think I want the smaller, uh, individuals, those that aren't super famous on the show. Now I know that sounds crazy because that's what draws subscribers and all that other stuff, but you know, I'd rather be helping somebody. So somebody that, you know, this might boost them a little bit. Those are the people I really like to have on the show. Now that doesn't apply to some of the people of that, that I've had, you know, John Ishi and his beautiful wife, Diana. I mean, that was just a pleasure to have them on and John, you're welcome back. And all you got to do is let me know when you want to jump in, whether it's an afternoon, that might be a bad time slot for you or another uh, Saturday night uh, gig Sunday morning for you. you. You're more than welcome back anytime. Um, and, and let me know, give me a couple of weeks uh, lead time so I can let everybody know and we can get everybody that maybe considering photojournalism um, would, would want to show up for that. So I've had some wonderful people on here. Um, and I get to spend time with, uh, you know, the big wigs over in Vahography's channel. You know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I really enjoy that. I'm really happy that he's invited me over to kind of sit in uh, with him in these uh, Vahography talks. I'm having a great time with that, too. So, and I, I encourage you guys to make sure you continue to monitor what Vahography's up to. He's got a lot of good content, videos, live streams, and everything else. So, uh, Albert, here we go. Uh, 
I intended to purchase full body mannequin to practice lighting, but instead I purchased a wig mannequin uh, out of concern that others would think I was insane or a freak. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe we, you and I both, Albert, maybe we just go buy a crash test dummy and nobody can, well, I don't know. They might think we're a freak for that too, but yeah. Uh, I hear you though. Uh, business, the unpleasant side of photography. Yes, yes, yes. There's nothing fun about the business side of anything. And those that think that business, small business owners and such, and my wife's, oh, I, I bet you I know why. Robert, if you're in here. Oh, Tomac. Uh-oh, uh-oh. For those of you that know about Supercross, Tomac is getting ready to break Ricky Carmichael. Carmichael's record at Daytona. Now that doesn't mean anything to most of you, but it's a big deal if you're a Supercross fan. And you know, motocross, Supercross, I love this stuff. So anyway, all right, I got to watch that later. Now, let's see. Uh, yes, Ryan, you're going to be back. You're not going to be back. You're here already. You're not going anywhere. You're just going to continue to grow. That's the way I see it. Uh, but business. Yes. And Ryan, if I can get you in here, uh, like I said, on one of these, we can sit down and you can talk all the, the whole time about business from soup to nuts, start to finish. You know, what do you need right up front if you're considering it? And maybe you can talk to those that are already kind of establishing them as themselves, uh, in a wedding, uh, photography business or portrait photography business. And, uh, I, I know that you've got a lot of experience now, uh, to base those comments on and those tips on. So there you go. Uh, Nikon camera announcement or perhaps a new lens announcement. Does anyone know? Uh, Sky, I made a prediction. I'm sticking with it that we are going to hear something about a development announcement for another camera. I'm sticking with it. Nikon cannot sit back on just the Z9. They've got to fill that gap. And, you know, I'll, I'll stick to that and I'll, I'll go along with people that disagree. That's fine, but that's coming before too long. I know it. I know it in my bones, man. Uh, let's see. Roy, you live a hundred meters from a bird filled lake. I just need time to go there, man. That is fantastic. Mm. Gustavo, let's see. For me, wildlife and nature photography is a hobby for me. Uh, more than 40 years. Wow. Mostly for mental relaxation. Okay. We are we are on the absolute same uh, train here, uh, Gustavo. That is one of the things I love about photography is, and I, it just happens to be wildlife and bird because it's behind my house. That is my go and get away from the world time. And I can spend two or three hours out there. And my wife asked me, well, did you get any great shot? Nope. Didn't, didn't get anything. Well, why'd you stay so long? <laughs> uh, I'm afraid she might take it to take offense if I say, because it's peaceful, but <laughs> it is. I just enjoy it. Uh, so Jeff and Leslie photography, it's a patient knowing your subject's habits. Yes, absolutely. So that's getting into the techniques for birding and wildlife, understanding their habits, their feeding habits, their movement uh, habits, and all those things will definitely help you and raise your uh, success in getting the shots that you want. But I go out there no matter. It's when I have a couple of hours. It doesn't matter. It's not the best time to go out there at noon or whatever. But just getting out there, sitting in the shade, having the camera ready, and uh, just, you know, letting the woes of the world pass by. Um, uh, and John, let me see. I haven't read. Hey, thanks, Chuck. We had a great time. We love your channel. Thank you very much, John, and, and, and your lovely wife, uh, Diana. You guys, again, were fantastic. Um and I had a great time and I, I learned a lot of things. And I think that some of the things that you talked about in photojournalism really apply to a whole lot more photography too. So I hope everybody else got something out of it. I'm sure they did. And again, you're welcome back. Just let me know. Uh, I wouldn't make it. Uh, let's see. 
I wouldn't make it in wildlife. <laughs> no, I, I don't see you being that patient. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way. You got an energy level that is above all. Um, so, yeah, that might not be the, the best fit for you. I can understand that. Uh, but then a lot of us couldn't possibly carry the energy that you carry in a photo shoot. So we're kind of in the same boat looking the other way. And, and I, you're, you're welcome on here anytime you pick a subject or whatever and get on the show with me and uh, let's talk, man. You've jumped in a lot of times you've called in and you have some really good points. And we're talking about cameras and entry level cameras and things like that. So you're welcome, brother. Uh, <laughs> this this sounds like my daughter when i would take her fishing yeah i'd be looking at my phone and miss the moment yeah yeah i can see that buddy i can see it uh daytona the poor man's le mans yeah let's see yeah gustavo uh talking uh to uh, Jeff and Leslie. It does. I love animals too. So uh, here's another little secret. I feed the raccoons here around my house and uh, it keeps them out of my garbage can anyway. I don't know if that's what keeps them out, but I feed the raccoons and love watching them and stuff like that. And my cat loves it too, because he sees them as company coming up on the deck and looking in the door, wondering why I haven't put anything out for them. Um, but that has a lot to do with wildlife photography as I see it as well. Um, uh, business side sounds like a, uh, like a job and it, it is. I mean, when you, when you're talking about business, that's what it is. It's a job. Uh, retired from one of those already. I do this for fun. I make a dollar or two, but I don't try to make money at it. Jeff and Leslie, uh, wildlife photography. Um, let's see. Open Icon gives us another camera. Here we go. But I don't know if it's going to happen soon. Yeah, none of us absolutely know, uh, Ryan, but I'm banking on it. It is going to happen. Uh, when I say soon, I don't mean tomorrow, but I don't think it's going to be too awfully long. It, I feel like Nikon realizes, too, that it has to be this year. Whether we get it in our hands this year or not, I don't know. But the development announcement and then an announcement kind of similar to the Z9, I, I do believe that's coming this year. I mean, look, they're already discounting uh, S lenses. Um, so the old idea of they're not going to do it to you know hurt sales of the Z9 or blah, 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 all the other stuff. I think a lot of things are being thrown out the window with camera makers right now, you know, brands. They're doing things a little bit different. If you look around, you'll notice – Things are different now than they were five years ago. Um, and I know there's a lot of reasons for that. You guys are uh, more than welcome to throw that in the comments. Uh, let's see. Z63 and Z73. It could be, Ryan. It could be. Um, and I don't know if, you know, based on the fact that we, after researching, there's nothing in writing or verbal that Nikon was guaranteeing, guaranteeing a firmware update for the Z62 and Z72. I know you asked that uh, question to Mark out there at the show. Man, you had the marketing guy in the U.S. in your grasp. Oh, Lordy, wouldn't I love to have been there? Man. Anyway, I'm not going to go on that rant, but <laughs> good on you, though, and good information. And he's not going to turn us on to anything, obviously, because he's in marketing. And marketing at Nikon means don't say anything. All right. Love Nikon. Don't care for their marketing. Uh, November of this year. Yeah. Yeah. I, November is going to be something. Uh, but I see it as an announcement rather than a development announcement or anything else. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, uh, yep, Tomac won, man. He may, he, he's, he's now eclipsed the record of the GOAT, the greatest of all time motocross supercross rider. So he's on his way. No, motorsport isn't relaxing, but I definitely love shooting it. I don't know why. That's why I say there are two things I love about photography or 
you know, one, one is a genre thing and that is uh, shooting motocross or action sports and things like that. And then the other is the relax relaxation and therapy that I get out of it. It just happens to be sitting around watching and waiting for birds or things like that. Wildlife. Hmm. I listen to smooth jazz to relax. You can do that while you're out shooting birds. Uh, 45. Uh, so Jeff and Leslie, you guys spend four to five days. Uh, some days we uh, great photos, many days we end up just watching and learning, but we get out there in the rain or shine. Yeah. You know what? And, and I don't know that I want to be out in the rain. Uh, good on you. Um, because it is a passion of yours, the wildlife side of it. For me, it's the peace and, uh, uh, I let my, let my mind wander to things that aren't, you know, uh, so heavy in reality, you know, the news, the things that are going on around the world. Uh, and I'm happy with that. And if I get a couple of shots of birds or my, uh, mergansers show up, you know, I haven't seen them for a couple of years now. That's always a great opportunity for a great shot. Um, but maybe this year, if I'm still here, I'm going to get that stupid uh, belted kingfisher that I've got back here. I'm going to get a photo of him with his reflection in the water. I got a Z9 now. I'm I'm armed. I'm ready to try it. Uh, yeah, not a lot shoot uh, wildlife for profit. You're right. You're right. Yeah, Robert Cooper's got to be upset, man. So I didn't see the race and I, I don't know what was going on. I've got live timing up over here. Sorry about that, folks. I've been cheating on you. <laughs> and I quit watching what was going on in the race. So I don't know how Tomac wound up winning. When you say Webb must be mad, I'm guessing that Tomac passed Webb. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, we have some possums. I got possums here too. And I have to shoot the raccoons away because they won't let the possums eat. That sounds terrible, doesn't it? Man, with my accent, that sounds bad. <laughs> Cockatoos. They're eating your house. Oh, wow. The only cockatoo I'm going to see is at the pet shop. Uh, J. Mitch Vision. Here we go. J. Mitch, welcome. Not into bird photography at, at all. Uh, all it will take is uh, you getting that one great shot. Yeah, you know what? It, it equates to golf. You get out there, you're frustrated, you're golfing, you know, your score's about 160. You, you've used the entire golf course and, you know, five reams of balls, and the last shot lands on the green a foot from the from the hole or the cup all of a sudden golf is cool again <laughs> and you're going to go back but you're right one good capture and all of a sudden you're on a hunt to do it again you're absolutely right oh uh, so true so true it's what keeps us coming back uh let's see let's see next night gun needs to be a killer apsc you know, Robert, that is a possibility. And, you know, my prediction of a, a, a D500 light body, I, I know Nikon's going to do it. I know there are a lot of shooters that say no, don't, uh, because that body's different. You don't need your, well, I shouldn't say it, but I think that body is different because you're probably buying it for wildlife, birding, something like that. And uh, you're not worried about a whole laundry list or great big line of uh, DX lenses because you're going to use your longest lenses probably anyway. And now you get the added oomph of it being a crop factor uh, sensor. So I, I think it's going to happen. I really do. I think Nikon will do it. Uh, here we go. Albert, one of the best places to find birds in the tri-state area is the Jamaica Bay Wildlife Refuge in Queens. Hmm, that's not too far off. I could coax my wife into a day. She could drop me off there and she could go into the city. She loves the, well, she's from the city, so. And I could just sit there and shoot birds. I'm going to check it out, Albert. 
I'm going to check it out. Thank you. Uh, you. You know what, Robert? I know that there are still a lot of people waiting, but I got a feeling that's going to change here in the next few months. So, yeah, I guess you're right. Anytime soon. Not anytime soon. But I think that's getting ready to change a little bit. Mm. I'm not saying they've filled all the orders yet because they haven't, but uh, let's see. Hey, Mike, good to see you in here. You missed it, man. It's all over now. You missed the whole thing. Just kidding. Just kidding. Let's see. J. Mitch Vision. Is it me or does it seem like everything is just moving too fast? I throw it up here. Uh, moving too fast with products. Folks are not slowing down and learning and growing with the cameras, music business, etc. Okay, I I agree with you. I agree with you, Mitch. I'll just call you Mitch. Um, or Jay, whichever you prefer. Um, but I don't want to get caught up in that forcing people to do something. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, you know, I'm going to let everybody do what they want, be what they want and everything else. If somebody wants to continue to buy cameras without ever understanding the, you know, the camera they bought three years ago, I, I, again, that's their business. The only time it, it may irritate me and I'm really doing a good job lately of biting my tongue and, you know, not saying anything is when they buy these new cameras and then they don't look at the manual. They don't do anything. They just pick it up and start complaining and, and asking questions, you know, like, how do you turn it on? You know, it may not be that basic, but there are some ridiculous questions. It's obvious that people haven't really mastered uh, the camera that they had. Not that I've mastered every camera I've had, but yeah. Uh, but you're, you're right. But let people buy what they want and do what they want. And the, the truth is, is that we're all better off. The more products that hit the street, the better off we are. And we can sit on the one that we have, which I'll do on the Z9 for a while, regardless of what comes out. Um, or, you know, if you, want to, you can jump again to the next new, uh, thing or feature. Uh, but, but you're right. They're definitely products are moving quickly, uh, or technology is moving quickly and things are outdated. Again, Joe in his book talks about a camera that you bought three years ago is, you know, now relegated to the museum because Things have changed that much in three years, and he's right. Motorsports at night. Okay. Is that what you enjoy shooting, Robert? Or are you talking about you're getting you're looking forward to motorsports at night? And which ones? I quit watching NASCAR, just so everybody knows. I grew up around racetracks, uh, dirt tracks for the most part. And uh, I even had an old uh, uh, hobby stock dirt uh, car. It's been a long time ago. And uh, that was racing to me. I grew up with that. And uh, I enjoyed NASCAR back then with all the short tracks, but I don't care nothing at all about it now. I never cared about the super speedways back then. And they only had two, and there were two races a year. The rest of the time was short tracks. And anyway, that's what I grew up with. So, I don't care about NASCAR under the lights unless they go back to all the short tracks they used to run. Uh, yes, I second, I second that, uh, Gustavo. It was a very good interview. Um, and better, uh, Ryan being there asking him questions than me because it would have gone very badly for me, for me. Uh, uh, back to the Z62 or Z63, Z73. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea because they're, I want to say they're running out of numbers. They're not, but I mean, man, they blasted through the uh, single digits quick, didn't they? Nikon, that is. So I don't know how they're going to continue the naming uh, convention. 
Hmm. Yeah, good luck with the Kingfisher, I know. But you know what? I have a Z9 now. It's magic. All I have to do is sit back and 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 it'll do it for me. I'm <laughs> just kidding. But I would like that shot. Uh, shout out to Panasonic. Here we go. Uh, you talking about the new camera? Hassan, what do you think? What do you think of? Uh, wildlife photography is both peaceful and frantic, so you need to be ready for both. Yes, very, you know, uh, big spurts of energy and frustration, uh, followed by lots of waiting for it to happen again. You're absolutely right. I hate possible. <laughs> uh, I love that. Uh, best wildlife photography is at Walmart. Yeah, yeah. That was a big page on uh, YouTube for a long time. People of Walmart or something like that. Jeffrey, we have a kingfisher that sits on a sign in a marsh, catches fish, beats, beats the crap out of it on the sign to tenderize it and swallows it down. Yeah. See, that's another problem I'm going to have back here where I'm at is, you know, he, he has a couple of, there's probably four different locations that he's at most of the day. It doesn't mean he's always at any, one of those four, but there are four predictable spots to find him, he, you know, eventually as you sit and wait. And uh, having the, uh, the uh, reflexes to catch him coming off the perch and follow him down to the water See, that's what I'm that's what I'm going to work on this year, or at least as long as I'm here. Ah, uh, so uh, another comment here. Uh, Z8, my needs are pretty simple. 30, 33 to 45 uh, megapixel, 15 to 20 frames per second. Good viewfinder buffer that will have two to three second burst. And the uh, two to six hundred millimeter lens. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I know there are a lot of people hoping for a lot of things with the Z8. If the Z8 is going to be the prosumer body, the D850-ish type body for uh, the mirrorless camera. And a lot of people are calling for super high megapixel. I mean, as high as 100 megapixel. I know, I know. There's all kinds of problems associated with that. But anyway, there are people that are asking for that. Uh you know, Robert, I knew you had the Z50, uh, 24 to 72.8. Images are killer. That's great. Looking more at the AP, uh, APS-C line right now is that will be, you know, more affordable. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I fell in love with the D500 when it was announced and you know, said I wouldn't get it and shoot, turned around, bought it anyway, and I actually used that camera quite a bit for a lot of things. I really enjoyed shooting with the D500. Uh, some, yeah, the Best Buy thing, there are some, uh, it's one of those things you got to watch it uh, constantly, and you'll see people every now and then that will po make a post real quick saying, you know, Z9 at Best Buy right now. Well, by the time he's made the post, people have seen it and everything else. It's long gone. But Best Buy is doing that. How, how and I don't know, or why, I don't know. Uh, let's see. Jeffrey talking about somebody jumped to an eight, you know, a seven four and got the two to 600, you know, uh, frames TM. He's been on the Hography show quite a few times. Uh, he just had a, he, he, he put a video out recently. He bought the a seven four and, uh, I mean, he likes it, but he does, he's honest in his review of it. And he talks about the feel of the camera, you know, and that has a lot to do with whether you really like a camera, which goes back to we'd all love to have a camera shop near so we can go in and put our hands on it. But it's a good review, initial review. And if you haven't been over there to see it, Frames TM is his YouTube channel. And, uh, yeah, he just reviewed the uh, or initial review of the a 7 IV. And he was a Nikon shooter, but he likes Fuji. He likes several different brands. He's not just uh, a one-brand loyalist. Uh, 
the one to 400, uh, Robert. Yeah, I'm loving that, but I haven't shot it as much as I would like to. But hopefully my little uh, refuge back here is going to open up soon. I don't mean open up literally, but, you know, the weather's going to get better and all the, the feathered critters are going to show up and I can really put that lens to use. Uh, all right, folks, I'm sitting here like a little boy uh, stomping my feet. Let me run off to the little boy's room, refill my coffee cup, and I will be right back. Thanks for hanging in here. All right, folks, sorry for the break there. And just so you know, my wife uh, heard the microwave going, heating some coffee up, and she said, you don't need no more coffee. She's right, of course, but hey, here I am. <laughs> oh. Bristol, there you go. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think that too, Roy. I think all the Z lenses are fantastic. Uh Yeah, Ryan, I hear you, man. I hear you. And you did a good job, too. It was a great job. And that's a big score. Mark was the announcer for the Z9. That guy is, uh, is an up-and-comer. And I think uh, Nikon needs to stick with him, actually. Uh, get some new blood in there for the announcement, not the stodgy old suit, you know, suit and tie uh, officials or whatever. He did a great job, I thought. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah, you know what? Vahagen just did this. He's pretty much gotten rid of most of his F mount uh, gear now or lenses. I don't know about bodies, but lenses. And I was telling him, I'm going to have to do that soon, too. I don't care what, it, and a lot of people are saying, no, glass, no, I, I got to tell you that right now is the time to get into photography. Uh, and I would recommend to people, try to steer them, uh, some people that are just starting, steer them away from uh, mirrorless just for right now and talk about how they can get into much more professional gear, cheaper, because there's a whole lot of F-mount lenses and uh, bodies dslrs that are hitting the market and uh man you can get some incredible deals and i wish those things that had been around when i had started buying all this stuff i mean for obvious reasons it wasn't that way um let's see uh Oh, man. A lot of comments. I'm just trying to catch up now, folks. Sorry about that. Anybody wants to call in? Let me throw that up here real good, real quick. Anybody wants to call in? You're more than welcome to. I just appreciate you all being here. I have such a good time. You guys teach me a lot, too, which is why I want to read the comments. Uh, a lot of people are sending me comments after the fact on the show, and I've tried my best to uh answer all of them but 
they've given me some tips, some feedback. And one of them was don't write all that stuff on those uh, reminder cards because people see that on their phone and you can't see it. It's so small. You know what? Absolutely. So I'm going to quit doing that. Somebody else said quit putting AP Studios on there. It comes up because it's a reminder about AP Studios. So again, point taken, change that. So you guys keep, keep helping me out here. I'm listening. Uh, let's see. Z8, yes, find difficult to switch between different style of cameras. My best combination was D800 and D800E. Yeah, you know, uh, you're right. And you build a muscle memory for one body that, you know, has most of the... Uh, most of the function buttons, I don't mean literally function buttons, but all those different buttons and everything in the same layout. And it's so much easier to grab one than grab the next. Um, I, it's not so easy going from, I'll just tell you from me, going from the Z9 to the D850. Uh, and that's not carrying it out shooting. That's just right here in the studio. Pick one up. And I'm already building the muscle memory for the Z9 where the buttons are, where the, you know, how it's laid out and everything else. So it's nice to have like cameras, especially if you're a working photographer, I guess, um, so much better out there when you're uh, earning a living with it. Hmm. 800 PF is all guesses. You bet. You bet it is. Uh, Patrick Smith on Vahography, uh the other night, uh, um, on the live stream, uh, had brought up something. I have no idea why I missed it. I just wasn't paying attention when he brought up the fact that the lens hood on the 800 is a bayonet, uh, lens hood, bayonet connection. It's not the thumb screw connection. You know, it may not even be carbon fiber. Um, all that to say, and being a PF lens, this thing may be cheaper than we think. I don't think this is an eight, a $16,000 lens like some people are just standing by. I guess they don't want to be uh, wrong with a, a, a low ball on what this thing's going to cost or something. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm thinking from six dollars to $8,000. I may be completely wrong. It's still outside my uh, budget for me anyway, but uh, I'm thinking six dollars to $8,000. You know, what do you guys think? Hmm. 200 to 600 is the one that everybody's waiting on. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, Jay Mitch, congratulating you there, Ryan. Absolutely. That was a great catch. Your <laughs> best Walter Cronkite. Uh, impression. Good job. Yep. Let's see. Run across the D850 for around 1500 I might. There you go. Uh, I might. Yep. It's a great camera. There's nothing wrong with the D850. That is a fantastic camera. It's not the first camera I would pick up for birding, obviously. I have shot it uh, shooting motocross. Uh, I shot the D800 and D810 quite a bit shooting motocross, but my D4 and D5 were the workhorses there and the D500 when I picked that up. Uh, and Roy, here we go. Uh-oh. I don't know why we froze up there. I will, John. I will. Hang on. I got to write this down. Otherwise, I got to watch the whole stream again to get it. All right. 
And John, what does this uh, pertain to? Uh, maybe uh, wanting to come on the show, and and maybe I ought to look at the next uh, comment. Let's see. Here, here we go. Yep. Here I'm going to answer my own question. <laughs> uh. Worldwide travel photographer, his images are mind blowing. Your audience will love it. I've told him about you. Thank you very much, John. Yeah, okay. You know, that's something we haven't talked about on the show yet is travel photography. Hmm. Absolutely. Uh, of course, I'm going to go check out his images too. Uh, but thanks, John. I, I will definitely uh, shoot an email. Appreciate that. Uh, 600 seems the optimal, uh, lens for birding. Yeah. You know what? That's a good conversation too, Roy. Um, by you, Josh has some, you know, quite a bit to talk about, about the 600 it is, it's phenomenal. But then, you know, he talks about it being too long at times and, you know, that's why he's really looking forward to this, uh, 400 TC 2.8, the new, the new lens. Um, I've always wanted that 600 millimeter F4. I really have. I have wanted it for years and obviously couldn't afford it. But, um, yeah, you know, even if it was too long, I could, I'd be okay. <laughs> I could let those photos slide just because that's such a phenomenal lens. Hmm. Internal zoom. Uh, yeah, and if it does, if it is internal zoom, yeah, I I think you're you're right in saying you'd pay a few hundred more because I think it would be, uh, it'd definitely be more expensive. Um, all right, Jeff. Appreciate you coming by. Appreciate you jumping in. Appreciate all your comments, too. So it's great having you in here. What time is it? Yeah, we're almost on the two-hour mark, aren't we? Well, you have the older 604. I take that. I mean, my 402.8 is old. It's 35 years old at least. I checked the serial number a while, or it's been several years ago. And I can't remember what year it was produced, but it's old. Still works. Uh, let's see. Name of a friend that uh, photographed hornbills. I pho photographed some in Brunei uh, many years ago using film, uh, Velvia 50. You know, yeah, John, you, you talked about that. You do have a friend, uh, How many of you guys want John to come back and his lovely wife? How many of you guys want to see them come back and uh, spend another show with us? Let him know in the comments. And uh, I don't know if we have anybody that even cares about becoming a photojournalist, but if anybody does, uh, you know, John would be a great brain to pick on that. You know, the woes of and everything else, uh, photojournalism. Now, when I say that, I, I'm not saying that, you know, the only reason we want, want John to come back is to help out somebody that wants to be a photojournalist. There was a lot that came out of that conversation, that, a lot of great tips for just everyday photography. So, and I know, John, you're full of experience and it's always great to, uh, definitely great to listen and learn. Um, Absolutely. Very interesting. So there you go, John. You're going to have to let me know now. You're just going to have to pick a Saturday, Saturday for us, but well, not everybody, but for most of us, Sunday for you though.
See, a lot of people in there. A lot of people want to want to see you and pick your brain some more. You're a great storyteller, and that's wonderful. You know, I think my favorite thing out of the whole show, and it's sad to say, is well, you got to find a dead guy. <laughs> I know what you mean, but it's just, it was just funny. I thought that was hilarious. And you're right. What's a tragedy without a dead guy? <laughs> Joe uh, McNally talks about that as well. Uh, that's, that's, that's a hoot. Mm. There you go. Right here. It's very important. I'd like to hear more of it. I would too. So there you go, John. Well, you just let me know. You just let me know when it would be convenient for, for you. And uh, we'll definitely have you back in here. And and of course, Diane is invited as well. So unless, unless you want to unless you want to leave her out, but then I get, I get to bring her on without you. I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, especially right now, you know, it's relevant too with what's going on over in the Ukraine. I'm not going to turn this into a big, you know, political thing. However, you know, we're seeing some of the photo photojournalists there and, uh, you know, you can give us some insight on, you know, what you think's going on with them and everything else, everything that they're, how they're reporting and stuff. You give us a little insider information there, maybe. All right. And Robert Daniels, been shooting street for the last few years, COVID. Okay. And now I'm excited to shoot events again yeah, because now I feel uh, that I see differently. Okay. Is that because of shooting the uh, shooting street or is it just because you've had time to absorb a whole lot more uh, during COVID, uh, Robert? Uh, we shall, we certainly shall. We'll set her up. Sounds great. Another vote for John from Mosman. All right. All right. That's great. Uh, why is this thing just now telling me I'm live? I've been live for two hours. Hmm. Full support for John and his lovely wife. And here we go. I got to get rid of these nuts. I don't know what they are. You guys see these weird things that pop up? I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to find me somebody that would be a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, admin. They can kind of watch for that stuff popping up. Uh yeah, Robert, I was talking a few minutes ago about, I got New York city. I mean, come on. It's one of the great, it's not the best maybe, but it's in the top whatever number for street photography. And I need to get down there and do some more because I actually had a good time one day shooting and I've posted a couple of the photos that came out of that. And uh, I'm going to post a couple more, but uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, there we go. Uh, Taught me how to re-see, okay, from a photojournalistic storytelling perspective. Okay, very good. And you know what? That came out of uh, the uh, discussion with uh, John Ishii, you know, as he showed the photos, thinking about how to capture in a way that it tells a story. Now, I know we all say we know that, but when you see it and he portrays it there in an image, it kind of hits home and, okay, I, it really, I really get it now. You know, how do I sell this? story or whatever so fantastic we look forward to john being back vahography has shown up all right oh he's driving and listening okay uh no you see he wants to know our let me throw it up here all right don't try to read this uh vahagen just kidding uh, driving right now, listening to the show i want to know your guys's opinion on nikon rumors silencing russian viewers yay or nay yeah I, I guess we can go that far. Um, you know, what do you guys think, right or wrong? I mean, this this is one of those conversations that get out of control real quick. I, I disagree with it. Um, uh, Nikon Rumors doing it, but that's my opinion. What do you guys think? Uh, um, 
Let's see. That's great, Roy. Um, well, for me, it, you know, it doesn't matter, but uh, I wonder how, uh, hey, congratulations, though, Roy. I'm glad to know, you know, that it was a good year for you. So, Jay Mitch, let's see. Uh, I'll catch you when in again or when you're on with the photography. Please keep it going. God bless, brother. You're welcome. God bless you and your family. And absolutely, uh, I'll keep her going, man. I'm having a good time. I hope you guys are too. So thanks. and Have a great night. Uh, yeah, it may be a moot point now, Jeffrey. You're absolutely right because they've shut down everything. Uh, let's see. Uh, shut down everything to the Russian citizens away. So I don't think they could access Nikon rumors anyway. I, I agree. I agree. It's a moot point, but, and you know what, maybe it would have been better if uh, Peter over at Nikon rumors had just left sleeping dogs live for a little bit longer. And the decision would have been easy for him. It won't make any difference, but I think, and this is what bothers me when there's a tragedy, all commercial. And I don't know if I lump uh, Nikon rumors into that, but you know, every, vendor out there tries to use the tragedy of their benefit by posting a commercial saying we stand behind everything blah 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 not that i'm for what's going on over there with russia doing what they've done it's a sovereign nation and well i'm not going to get into this deep but you know we need a break from that those things okay all day long, we're fighting all these things that are in the news, in the media. We all have opinions um, and, you know, uh, but this is kind of a refuge as it will, as it, you know, as it might be uh, photography talks and things like that. This is an opportunity to break away from that for as long as you want to stay and participate in the, the conversations and everything else. There are plenty of avenues out there to talk about this. And I'm not trying to stifle anybody or your opinion or anything else. I'm not hiding uh, behind this comment or anything else. I have strong opinions about it, okay? I have strong opinions about the our nation and the uh, administration we have. But I want to get away from that, and I hope everybody else does too, and kind of keep this to, let's just – enjoy the moment where we're not fighting the battles. Does that make sense? And I hope it does. And again, I'm not saying this to keep subscribers, but, or anything like that. It's just the way I feel. And I've said this on some other channels, not recently, but over the years, when they get political, I don't want to be in there anymore. You know, I get that constantly. Uh, from friends and, you know, acquaintances and other things and work and whatever. Um, so I, I just kind of abstain from it, you know, here. And I'm not saying anything about, you know, hey, Vahagan, you know, bringing it up. That's fine. If, if somebody wants to share their opinion that you think it was a good move or not, because that is kind of photography related within our, uh, in our, our Nikon rumors. But um, I definitely don't want to go down that path of turning the, channel into a pulley. Oh, I could do that. Oh, I could do that because I am very opinionated. I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> but, uh, I don't want to go there. I want this to be our little respite, our place to go talk about cameras and argue in a good way about, you know, what we think or what we like or what we don't like, but definitely not to go down the path of politics. So there you go. There's my, my statement. And I hope you guys don't mind me going on about it for a minute. All right. Let's see. And no, 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 nothing wrong there, Vahography or Vahagan. That's fine. Okay. I'm not pointing this at you. I just want to make it clear that I just don't want to go down that path. I want to be able to, there's, there's a few minutes a day and things we do, and we want to be able to continue to enjoy it and not have to go through the battle of what's going on in the world. I mean, we could talk about gas all day long too. Uh, um, let's see. <laughs> Bozeman. There you go. A little amusement. 
Uh, unless Putin is a Nikon shooter, not sure it does much good. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Yeah, you know what? You're right, Roy. And it's his channel, and I, I'm sure not going to tell him, uh, or it's his site as far as uh, Nikon Rumors goes. And uh, he can do what he wants. He can do what he wants. But I see he's met with a lot of people over there that don't want to hear it either. That's that, you know, they 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 want to get away from it, which is really unusual because over there in their forum, it's all about picking a good fight, isn't it? I mean, it seems like that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, good question. Ballpark price on the eighty five one point two. I don't know, but I'm really holding out, and I don't know if I'm going to hold out much longer. I, I'm holding out for that lens. I don't know why. Um, I have the 84, 85 1.4G, and I hate that lens. I love what, how it renders, but it's so slow, and it's, I don't know. Um, and maybe the 85 1.2 would be better, and I'd enjoy it more. So I'm holding out for it, but I'm about ready to pounce on the 85 1.8. I want to get something for the studio. I have the 70 to 200 uh, F mount lens that I could use with the FTC adapter, but I don't want to. Um, but anyway, yeah, I don't know what it's going to cost. I'm afraid to even speculate because it may be something that hurts my feelings. All right. Yeah, Roy, so much for NATO. Absolutely. But I don't think it's a surprise to us. Uh, Mosman says 2500 talking about the 85 1.2 with the prices going up for gear. Happy to be wrong, though. I, I agree. I, I think you're in the ballpark there, Mosman. I think that it's going to fall in there. Um, we'll see. All right, John. John's got to go for lunch. Uh, email you with a date. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, get you the contacts for Sanjit and uh, who's foremost hornbill photographer. Okay. Thank you very much, John. Always a pleasure having you in here. I'm glad you commented and look forward to you on the show again, as everybody else does, it seems. So have a good afternoon. Tell your lovely bride we said hello if she's uh, left the chat. Uh, all right. All right. Here's another knucklehead I had to get rid of. All right. You have a good weekend and rest of the week. Well, there's not much left of it for you, uh, John, but enjoy it. Um, let's see. Now, thank you, Robert. Yeah. I just, you know, there are so many places to go to get into that conversation I just I want to be able to kind of, you know, keep it away from here. We can have a good time. I mean, if it was something that was affect, affecting us, I mean, well, I know this is, but I mean, you know, if there's tornadoes were coming through somewhere, then I'd be all about, let's talk about it. You know, let's do everything we can to help others and warn them or whatever. It may not be a good analogy, but my point is, is that we're not going to change anything discussing and possibly arguing politics and everything else on my little channel in a photography forum. Um, so, you know, it's probably best we leave it alone, let everybody have their own opinion and, uh, and then we can all remain friends. <laughs> no. I think we all probably feel the same way or pretty close. So, uh, let's see. Albert says 2,500 or above. He, it's his uh, assumption on what the 85 1.2 is going to cost. Yeah, Vagan got the 51.2. I'm jealous yet again. <laughs> I have the 51.8, and I do love that lens. I really do. But the 51.2 opens up some more creative possibilities. Do I need it? No, but it could help me with some more creative ideas I have. Um Let's see. Jeffrey says 1999, possibly. It's a guess. Uh, Z mount lenses uh, tend to be $300 or more than the F mount. Let's see. Joe McNally and Jerry uh, 
Yeah, Jerry McGionis, uh, uh, they love the 85 1.8. I'm seriously tempted to go ahead and buy it, Jeffrey. It falls into my budget right now, and I want something for the studio. So I don't know. I don't know. I have, now here you go. Right now, in my basket at B&H is a 105 Micro, the new S lens, uh, because it is available right now. And uh, so I, I don't know. I was pondering that as well. Looking here. Sorry about that. Not paying attention to the camera. There we go. All right. I don't know. I got to figure out what I want to do. I'm not going to be one of those knuckleheads that what lens should I get? Or what do you want to shoot? I know what I want to shoot. I know what's available. I just have to make a decision. Oh. Uh, Yeah, I agree, Roy, and the 85 being a niche, it, and it is. It's not something I'm going to shoot. I mean, I guess I could if I got used to or tried or whatever, but it's a, for me, it's just a studio lens, or even uh, it's just a portrait lens, um, a, a less expensive portrait lens than many others out there that are great. And shooting inside, if you want to do portraits inside, that 105, and that's why I've left that macro in the cart, 105 is pushing the limits for me here in my little studio. All right. Let's see. Let's see, after using the Z, uh-oh, here we go. Here's a, here, using Z9 today, there's a big time learning, learning curve with all the, <laughs> what I tell you, Vaughn, you know, that's why, <clears throat> that's why I've said that to people that are just picking up that, that camera. Don't get discouraged because there is a learning curve that goes along with it. It does a lot of things and a lot of things well, but you have to choose the right things for the right moment. So I'm glad you had a good time with it out there, though. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, gonna, dog needs to go out and is ready to crash. Talk to you next week. Thank you very much, Jeffrey. As always, love having you in here and uh, love seeing your post over in Nikon Amateurs Group. So. For those of you that uh, want a, a safe place to go and drop your photos and not have to worry about everybody uh, talking smack and everything else, here you go, Nikon Amateurs Group. Uh, we're over on Facebook and groups. And, uh, yeah, come and show us what you do, what you enjoy. And no matter how outlandish you think it is, it's a good test bed over there. You know, we'll let you know we like it or whatever. Uh, we're not going to we're not going to berate you over what you've done like a lot of people do. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, I think the what I was thinking about here, uh, Roy, was uh, not shooting all portraits wide open or anything like that, but it opens up the possibility for some creative shallow depth of field stuff and as you know i don't have to tell you a lot of people don't understand no matter how shallow the depth of field is the farther you are away from the subject the more depth of field you have i don't know why people don't understand that if that was the case that you know it just maintained that same depth of field from uh you know shortest distance to infinity then that 200 f2 would be the greatest lens ever produced and it is a great lens and you want to shoot with it, but I mean, you have to know what you're doing when you're using it. Uh, if it's below 2,500, it will be a grand slam. Yeah, I'm with you, Albert. I hope it. Uh, I hope it isn't too expensive, and I hope I can wait for it. I really do. But I think I'm going to buy something here before long. Maybe not. Maybe not. It'll just. It, It'll disappear in my card here before too long, and I won't have to think about it anymore over at D&H. All right. Uh, Amazon. Sigma Patton for a 28-70 F2 was just released. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. So they're going to try to go the route of uh, Canon. That won't be a cheap... Well, it'll be cheaper than Canon, I think, but it still won't be a cheap lens. All right, folks, and we're in here two hours and 18 minutes. I think I'm going to skedaddle. 
Yeah, Chad, I see the 105. Yeah, I just I don't know if that uh, focal length is good for me or not. Uh, oh. Let's see. Here we go. Mr. Vahagan, me and Maz, uh, we're in a hurricane light conditions today. It was crazy. I mean, you can imagine. You'll see the video soon. Had a great time, though. I, I bet you guys did. If nothing else, it was just fun being out there shooting together. I'm sure, Vahagan. I know I would. I'd have a ball. Um, anybody's ever in Connecticut, anywhere near southern Connecticut uh, down here, uh, let me know. I'd love to go out and, you know, meet you as you travel through or if you're here for whatever reason. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't expect people to be flocking to Connecticut because I'm trying my best to get out of here. But you might be passing through and uh, would love to meet you. And uh, I, I'd love to put a photo walk together somewhere, you know, someday. I'm not talking about it anytime soon, but it would be fun if we could organize something like that down the road and somewhere convenient to everybody that maybe some could participate. So, all right. Chad's getting ready to go. Uh, yeah, it's been great seeing everybody in here. I appreciate everybody that's in the uh, audience out there and didn't comment. Um, hey, don't, don't ever hesitate. Jump in here and chat with us. I mean, I can say some pretty outlandish things and I don't mind people telling me, whoa, 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 wait a minute. You're completely wrong or whatever but we have a great audience we have a great uh community going here and again want to keep helping everybody else i don't know how much help i can give but i know you guys have the opportunity with all your experience and wisdom and everything else to chime in and help everybody out so let's keep doing that we're doing the same thing over on nikon uh amateurs uh, group page uh trying to help each other out Sky, if you're still in here, I hope you're doing well, buddy. And, uh, you know, you can reach out anytime uh, in chat. So appreciate everybody again. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of the weekend, as always. Um, and uh, Tuesday night, let me go over it again. Joe McNally, uh, big roller over on uh, Vihography Talks, uh, his channel, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. 9 p.m. Eastern time, and uh, that should be a hoot. That should be a lot of fun. And again, if you get a chance, uh, you know, check out his book. Just go read the primer for it over on uh, Amazon or wherever it's listed. Um, so that's Tuesday night, and then Wednesday noon is uh, my live stream, my show. Don't know what we're going to chat about, but um, maybe we'll throw up some photos and start talking about that. Anybody would like to? Uh, show some of their photos in the live streams. Uh, we can set aside a few minutes for that. If you would like to do that, all you have to do is email me your photo and we'll see if we can keep from butchering this too much. Uh, but email me your photo and I'd be happy to throw it up in the live stream and a small segment in the live stream. Just talk about who sent what in and you can highlight some of your best work if you like. And I'd love it. And everybody gets to see what you do. So, that's out there for everybody. That's an offer to everybody that uh, tunes in. And uh, yeah, let's just keep it going. Thanks again, folks. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you all. I hope things go well. And uh, we'll see you Tuesday night. All right. Have a good one.